walking along this ridge, I came to this absolute cracker of a lookout. It's a pretty nice spot up here. But um, yes, yeah, so where I'm planning on heading tonight is I'm hopefully going to go down this ridge and stay at um, this river that runs along through the bottom of here. So hopefully spend the night down there. Um, just got to try and find a way, a way down there, try and bush bash or hopefully it's not too hard, but we'll give it a go. here again today um, looking for a place to camp in a new area so it's pretty cool to check it out um, just hike from the ridge up the top and I'm going down to the down to the um, river at the bottom so hopefully I can find a nice place by the river to set up camp and go for a swim because today it is bloody hot as you can probably tell from all the sweat on me um, but yeah so let's see what I can find cool little area to spend the night. Um, it's a pretty nice spot here. It's got a pretty cool rocky outcrop that um, surrounds it. And I'll show you over here. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, and it's relatively flat which is good so not too many shops around. Should be able to set up the hammock pretty easily and have a little fire. And then it's also right next to this little swimming hole so um, which is currently in shade because the sun's just about to set behind the ridge which is pretty welcome at the moment because it has been very hot today um, so keen to, keen to get in the shade but uh, yeah seems like a nice little spot so I think it's time to set up the hammock The way that um, I set up my hammock is a pretty simple way. Uh, basically just get a length of rope and then, then just tie a knot at the end of it, tie it together and basically just wrap it around the tree and put the, the end back through the loop and that's it. And um, yeah, the friction on the tree will keep the hammock in place. Pretty simple way to do it but it's effective so. Um, same thing again on this tree, just wrapped around, through the loop, and you're good to go. And then so just, obviously this is going to be a bit too long for this distance, so I'll just tie a simple knot, just roughly, just now you can play around with it once you've done the other one. Um, that way you've made that just shorter, and then just put the carabiner through that. Same deal here, so I just put a knot through so that way you create a, a small loop, just stopper at the end and then grab in on and yeah, good to go. Oh. 
man, what a day. That was, um, that was a tough one. Really hot, probably like, I don't know, what, uh, early 30s, maybe 33 or something, but um, pretty high humidity. So, and yeah, sort of going somewhere where you haven't really been before. You don't really know what kind of terrain you're gonna get into, so. Most of it was pretty good, but there were some parts where it was just, um, yeah, pretty tough scrub to push through. And yeah, um, like, I'm sure you've probably seen, but compared to sort of like the, the sort of Northern Hemisphere, like, the, um, like Canada and America and um, like UK and stuff, the Aussie bush is um, pretty unforgiving. It's um, <clears throat> pretty, pretty dense scrub and it scratches the hell, hell, hell out of you. Like I've got so many cuts on my feet, my legs today, but it's sort of part of the game. But um, yeah, I thought I'd just um, talk to you about sort of why I started this channel. Um, I see, like, I've watched lots, lots of like the UK and the, the Canadian guys, um, sort of bushcraft and camping style channels, and I, th I thought there's no there's no real Aussie guys doing it. So I thought um, we have such a different terrain here compared to, to you guys up, like compared to the North American guys and stuff. Um, we don't have pine trees. We all, like our most most of our trees are gum trees, eucalypts, and um, and gophers and stuff like that. And so we have a lot of different materials to work with. Like we don't have the straight straight up and down pine trees that you see all these other bushcraft guys kind of used to make the shelters out of like I have to work with sort of very um all over the place branches and try and sort of do the best I can with that and I'm going to try and do a few more um, or a few upcoming videos where I do a bit more sort of um bushcraft style camps where I'm not, not in a hammock more just sort of try and sleep on the ground sleep on the ground and make a little shelter but um at the moment it's pretty hot and so to be honest, I don't really want to sort of, there's lots of like spiders and snakes around this time of year. So I kind of want to be off the ground in a, ha in a hammock. Um, but yeah, so I thought it'd be a good idea to sort of try and start it and, um, and show, show the world like what Australia has to offer. And so hopefully it takes off and hopefully you guys can tell your friends and stuff and, and recommend it to people. Hopefully I'm doing a half decent job. Um, but yeah, I just seem to got frustrated when like I was searching, I just couldn't find many guys at all in Australia who kind of do this. So, um, yeah, I kind of, I'm going to sort of do a combination of some bushcraft kind of stuff and then just your general camping, um, adventure kind of videos as well. Um, but yeah, so it's probably enough now. I'm going to eat my plum because I've been waiting all day for this. This is a, it's a treat after a hard day's work. So, oh. This is probably the best fruit. Plums. Oh. Anyway, um, just want to sort of talk to you guys about that. Um, especially today's like today when it's really hot. It makes it pretty difficult to put all the effort in and, and do these um, videos because you just want to get there. You don't want to have to stop and do a different angle and film and stuff, but I don't know, it's all part of it. Um, yeah, keep doing it until it doesn't become fun anymore, but at the moment, it's enjoyable. It um, gives me a reason to sort of get out there and, and like, I like the idea of showing Australia off to different people, so. Yeah, anyway. I'll get back to you guys later. So just got to clear the area. Um, just to make a spot for the fire. It's pretty good too, because I could probably use this rock to lean against for a bit of a reclined seat, which is pretty good. I just have the fire there and it should work well. Just going to go collect some rocks, um, just put around the fireplace just so it keep, stays contained. Pretty lucky because there seems to be a lot of rocks around here, which is good. Means I don't have to go very far.
The other good thing about this spot is there seems to be plenty of firewood around, which is pretty good. So good that that sun's finally gone behind the ridge. It was an absolute scorcher today. <laughs> Don't even really need the fire um, fire tonight. I only really need it for um, for food and just something to do. A bit of bush telly to watch, but yeah, apart from that, it's um it's warm enough. But anyway, let's get something to keep me occupied through the night. So I just got this new pack for um my birthday off my girlfriend which is pretty nice of her. Um, the brand's called Tasmanian Tiger um, I think the pack's called a Raid Pack 2 if I remember correctly and I think it's about 45 litres um, but I'll do another video with like a proper rundown of all the features and what it can hold and all that kind of stuff um, this is more just a quick to show you guys that I've got a new bag um, but yeah I'm pretty stoked with it hey like it ticks pretty much all, almost all the boxes that I was looking for in a bag um, in particular I really wanted something that had these two um, external pockets like and in here I'll sort of keep my sort of um, water bottle and medical kit in the other side. Um, it also has this really good top pocket which um, sort of keeps like bits and pieces I'll need for the day um, which is really good and it's like a good quality pocket that um quite easy to find stuff and then yeah I've um, got a sleeping bag down the bottom then bits and pieces inside. This was my um my sweat rag for the day. <laughs> Um, yeah, sweating a fair bit, so it came in handy just to keep it off my forehead. Um, yeah, and just some rope attached to it. Uh, it's, it's, um, what I really like about this bag is it's built really well. So, the, um, the strap system at the back is probably one of the better bags that I've tried on. Um, it's really supportive compared to my last bag, which was more of a cheaper bag. And I used to always get a sore back with it, but with this one, I've only used it twice, but I've done some pretty decent hiking in it and um, it's held up pretty well which is good. So it's really, really strong, really good quality, that's what I really like about it. Um, this waistband can come off if you want it to which is good. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a bit more of the military style bag which I wasn't a big fan of and I would rather have probably got, not got a military style bag but um, more bushcraft kind of bags I was looking at. There's a few things about them that didn't quite um, tick the boxes. Uh, I wanted to think it was a sort of good all-rounder, something that are, is good for more of these short, um, more bushcraft style trips, but also something I could take on a bit of a longer trip. Um, and I wanted to think with really good straps, that was the main thing, because I have a bad back, and so um, it's pretty important to me. But um, yeah, so it's a really decent bag. I'll do another video with a rundown and everything. Um, oh, actually, one thing is it's a little bit heavy. I think it's about three and a half kilos or three kilos, which is probably would have rather something around two kilos but like I said the straps are really good um, so you don't really notice that weight as much whereas my other bag was a lighter bag and I noticed the weight a lot more in that so even though it's heavier I think the fact that it's built really well and really supportive um, yeah sort of counteracts that so yeah good bag. So what I've got here is my, um, my tinder pouch and inside it I've got some paper bark um, from the paper bark tree. Um, so this stuff's um, probably the best the best tinder you can find in Australia um, to use with a fire steel. So first off we'll just scrape some of the fibers back. be enough. Um, and now I'll just get my fire steel, my ferro rod. There 
Yeah. Put some of these needles on. Let's put some small sticks on. I think it's time to make myself a gin. Just like, let's, get, let's put the gin in like a little bottle. Um, I know it's glass, but I kind of wrap it in um, a tea towel, so it hasn't broken yet, so hopefully it doesn't break in the future. Oh yeah, I love gin, so I could drink this all day, every day. Even though, most of, like, most of my mates find it crazy the fact that I can drink it without um, out any ice, but I don't know. I find it um, when you sort of like hike and camping during summer. I find I, I I used to take beer, but I found beer got too. There's no way to keep it cold, and there's nothing worse than 30 degree beer. So I figured um, gin's probably um, yeah next best next best thing. So. Cheers. So the sun just set. Um, it's about 8.40, I think. Um, yeah, so it just set, so it's getting pretty dark now. So I figured it's a good time to chuck, um, chuck a steak on, have some dinner. Although, when it's so hot like this, like, because it's still really warm tonight, um, it doesn't really make me want to have dinner. What I want to do is basically just drink water and and maybe a bit of gin, that's about it. But I figured after what I've done today, um, all, the, like, yeah, all the hiking, I should probably, probably eat something. So what I've got, to, what I've got tonight is, um, is a piece of kangaroo steak. So I didn't just use my grill to cook on it. Uh, if you've watched like any of my other videos, you'll know that um, I'm a big fan of kangaroo steak. It's uh, I might just wait for that. Um, oh, I should be able to see if it's hot enough. Yeah, that's alright. There you go. Yeah, so I, um, yeah, like I was saying, so big fan of kangaroo steak. So, um, I pretty much eat that mainly. Like I pretty much never eat beef um, or pretty much any other animal, like animal basically. Pretty much just eat kangaroo because it's a pretty sustainable. Um, Source. There's about 60 million kangaroos in Australia, sort of running wild, um, and rather than sort of um, support the, I figured just yeah, there's a sustainable um, meat. They roam free, um, and they're really good for you. It's high in iron, high in protein. Um, I figured yeah, it's a it's a better meat to sort of eat than um, whereas beef uses up a lot of um, a lot of resources to produce just a kilo of beef. So I don't know. And I actually quite like the taste, whereas some people find it a bit gamey, but for me, um, I quite like it. So, yeah, we'll hook this up and see how it goes. So what I've got here is um, a bit of bush spice. Um, actually, bush spice and a bit of garlic and herb salt. Uh, I think it's a Master Foods um, brand, I think, that do it. Um, yeah, I just combined the two. Um, you can, yeah, you can find it at um, Coles or, or Woolies. They both sell it. Um, and this stuff. Ooh. This stuff um, goes well with anything. You can put it on sort of like potato and corn and yeah, it makes, yeah, it's real nice. Um, yeah, definitely with steak. I put that in a bit of Kewpie mayonnaise and you've got yourself a dinner. It's about ready to turn over, I think.
you kind of think I might have burnt the bottom of it. Oh yeah, <laughs> just a dad, but she'll be right. It's looking pretty good there. All right, sweet. Well, I think that's just about done. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Yeah, so it's looking pretty good. Um, like I said, I've got Kewpie mayonnaise. Um, if you don't know what it is, it's the Japanese mayonnaise you get when you're at, um, at like a, a sushi um, sushi place. Really good. You can buy it at I'm pretty sure most um, supermarkets and it's you can put this on everything literally like steak sandwiches uh, sushi it makes everything really good but um yeah I find it with steak it's um it's delicious so let's put a bit of that on yeah perfect Cook perfect, so. Mmm. That is, that is really good. Cool. Anyway, um, I'm just going to sit down and enjoy this. Have a another gin or two. Um, sit, sit by the fire for a while and um, but probably not have a too late night. It's been a big day so pretty getting pretty tired, so pretty keen to hit the hit the hammock. So um, yeah anyway I'll be back in touch in the morning. So just as I was about to fall asleep, um, I heard some lightning and some thunder in the distance and then sure enough in about five minutes it it came over and started to sprinkle and then it really started to to rain. So I quickly um grabbed the top out of the, the bag and Put it up. Um, managed to get up just in time, which is good, so I didn't get too wet. But um, yeah, considering that um, there's meant to be no forecasts of, um, of rain tonight, but just goes to show what does the weatherman know. Um, but yeah, so I managed to get the tarp up. It will be hard to see in the yeah at night time. The camera's not the best at picking up stuff at night, but yeah. Um, yeah, so hopefully, hopefully it doesn't rain too hard in the night and I can get a half decent sleep and yeah, so I'll see you guys in the morning. So yeah, pretty eventful night last night with the rain coming over at about 11, 11.30, just as I was about to fall asleep. So, But I'm um, pretty lucky I had the tarp in my bag because if I didn't, I probably would have been pretty screwed. So it seemed to rain um, most of the night. It's actually quite nice to fall asleep too, which is, um, which is good. But yeah, um, it's pretty... Uh, Pretty nice morning. Um, it's a bit overcast, which is kind of good compared to the the sun yesterday. But if I sort of show you around, yeah, it's got the fire there and, and the top set up above me. Yeah, it's not a bad little spot to wake up to. Very peaceful. Um, but yeah, I think I'll probably get up in a second and I'll cook up some brekkie.
We don't nut to fall in the fire, do we? So just going to cook up um, uh, some scrambled eggs with, um, with some red onion and then uh, just a bit of a uh, hot chocolate, or maybe not hot chocolate, just a bit of a warm chocolate. No particularly, it's a pretty warm morning, so I don't particularly want something too too hot to drink, but. Right, well, I think that's done. Just some um, hot chocolate. Yum. These are absolute life so, um, godsend. They're so handy just to take things on and off the, the hot fire. Oh yeah, this is real good. I put extra butter in this one, so definitely um, gives it a lot more flavour. Mm. But yeah, so, pretty cool spot here. Um, really enjoyed um, spending the night here. It's always good to sort of try out new spots and you never quite know what you're going to come across, especially if you've never been to the place before. Like you could, I got pretty lucky here with finding a pretty flat um, level area, but not too much um, scrub around, but sometimes you can get some pretty um, tough places to try and set up camp, but no, this worked out well. So, um, yeah, um, I think I'm probably just going to sit here and try my scrambled eggs and my hot chocolate, and um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I'll probably have a few more coming out pretty soon. Um, similar kind of style, just hiking, camping overnight with a hammock, and um, yeah. So. Anyway guys, well, um, thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you next time. Hooroo.